Hi everyone. We are doing our Wellness Wednesday. I am Lucy Flores. I am a part of the Women's March Board and um, we are going to just hang out for a couple minutes as folks join us and we wait for our guest, Beth Million, who we're super, super excited to talk about and with, of course. Um, so as soon as she joins, we will start this conversation. Thanks everyone for joining. This is Wellness Wednesday, a part of our series. And um, let's see, we are still waiting for Beth Million. So Beth Million is awesome. Um, if you haven't heard for, about her, you definitely should know her. Um, follow her on Bethlehem Million is her IG. And we're going to talk about how we can use music and art as a form of self-expression, as a form of, you know, really dealing with a lot of stuff that we're doing, that we're going through these days. Um, okay, so I see that Beth has joined us. So now, as soon as she, I can either request her or Beth, if you can ask to join. Let's see, here we go, I see her. There she is. Hello. hello, hello. Hi, how are you guys doing? Hi, we're doing fantastic. How are you? Thanks so much for being with us this week. I mean, I know how busy your schedule has no. to be and taking this time is just so important for our community. You know, we do these Wellness Wednesday conversations as often as we can. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, this is just like such an, I, I love this topic because it's like such a critical um, issue to be talking about, especially these days with so much going on, right? And we talk about all kinds of different outlets that we can use. And sometimes we just don't realize what tools we have available for us to, yes. you know what I mean? To not only And it's help, accessible. It's something right. that's accessible to a community. And so I think it's so interesting if, if as an artist, you're using this term community so loosely, it's important to know, like, like that you make sure that it is accessible otherwise it's that's exactly right yes yeah. okay so before we hop in because i feel like we're just gonna get just i know i was right like in. Oh gosh, early in the morning I'll be right young, you know, riled like, up. right let's just get it um but so i want everyone to know who we're talking with um i'm lucy flores as i mentioned i'm on the board of the women's march and this is beth million if you don't know of her, as I said already, you absolutely should know of her. She is amazing, talented. She's an artist. She is an actress. She is an amazing, talented singer. Follow her on Bethlehem Million on her IG as soon as we're done or do it now. Um, feel free to ask questions. And yeah, we're going to get into this conversation about not right. just how Beth approaches um and also beth you know we're definitely i want to start out with you you know yeah. i want to hear a little bit about you before we jump right into like the actual topic topic because mm -hmm. i think it's really important so let's talk about how you got here like tell us a little bit about your journey um and yeah and what led you to music and art and just everything that you're doing oh boy accidents, <laughs> accidents. isn't that just <laughs> the question but no um i so I, my family's fully Ethiopian, so, you know, uh, homage to, to the motherland. Um, I wouldn't be here right now if my parents, like, didn't come to the U.S. and try and give me a better life. And so um, I was born in Atlanta, and then I moved to Switzerland when I was two years old, and I grew up there my whole life. Very wow, far wow. away from anything entertainment-related, but I remember I used to always, like, I, I, I always, like, found a way to perform somehow and uh, actually interestingly enough i'm sure we'll get into it my way into music like kind of started with musical theater and also like kind of by accident um but um yeah i, I stayed there and then i uh, i wanted to come to new york i wanted to come to the u.s for college and i kind of told my mom i was like Listen, if I get into the top three uh, top three musical theater schools in the world, one of them, like you have to let me go. She's like, cool. Um, luckily, I got a scholarship, and then I went there. And while I, I was doing musical theater, I felt like it was so interesting to have on a professional level have words put into your mouth. And mm. I was like, I didn't really fit in because of like the various 
places that I grew up and, and the various understandings and complex understandings of myself that I had, I found it really hard. And especially just as a black woman in general in musical theater, there's very, very little that is right. existing. And yes, we're getting better and right. stuff like that, but I found it really difficult. I took a, some time off and then um, I went abroad as one does when they want to find themselves. And then uh, I didn't have, I did completely academic. And then um, I just, I, I really missed that bug. And I was like, let me just, maybe what if I write my own words? Maybe that'll be more satisfying to me instead of, mm. you know, cause I, I didn't feel like I was getting the catharsis that like everybody else was receiving in my classes. And I was like, why is this? Like, why am I not seeing myself or feeling myself in, in any intimate way? And then, and then once I started writing my own music and performing that stuff, going back to musical theater firstly was something that was so, so fulfilling to me and also just as an actor as a multi-hyphenate i was just like uh, like screw these boxes pretty much mm -hmm. i was just like we just got to take it one door at a time one opportunity at a time and just really at the end at the core it's it's about creating something for for other people it, it's it's yes. a gift it's you're creating something in the world that didn't exist before and hoping to leave it a better place so that's that's my story <laughs> and you're, and you're <laughs> yeah. And you're and you're sticking to it. Yeah. Uh, so you actually said a couple of interesting things that I want to go a little deeper into. Um, you mentioned, I, I mean, I just find it so fascinating that you grew up in Switzerland and yeah. you and then you came and, and you're like growing into your identity and then you're seeing that you're not mm -hmm. reflected in music and in your art. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, really thinking about the audience and, and you know, the, the various ways in which they have their own outlets, you know, not right. everybody, of course, is a talented songwriter or a talented singer or a talented right. actress, right? But yeah. tell us a little bit more, like when you actually started writing, um, you know, you don't have to be this talented writer, right? Like just putting words on paper, if you can't find them elsewhere, or right. you know, doing something. If you if you don't see yourself in something, then you can create your own thing. Yes. And you don't have to be, you know, a record label. You don't yeah. have to be anything, even more right? reason to do so. Even more reason to do so. But I think one of the biggest lessons that I learned for so long was I was I got so tired of waiting for permission. Mm. And I was somebody that and I and I like as a woman like growing up in the generation that I did. I feel like. I felt like as a woman, I was constantly being praised for politeness, but mm -hmm. that did not give me the satisfaction that I felt like I needed or the, the healing that I feel like I could get by purely putting words to it, like on paper. Like that's, that's really how it started. It's not right. like, I, I don't know music theory. I don't like, you know, music, like there's a whole recorded music program at NYU. Right. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing them, I like that, that's what they've been doing all four years. And I was like, who do I think I am like trying to do exactly what they're doing? And I was like, well, who do, who do I like, who, who am I supposed to be in order mm -hmm. to do that? I was like, they're really, it's, you know, and um, as soon as I kind of took those shackles off of myself, I realized that I'm still so young and anything that I, that I enjoy that I start writing down is going to grow by itself the same way yeah. that I'm growing. It's not, it doesn't have to be my job to like, you know, pull it up, pull myself to a certain level or anything. It was, right. it was this like false, like wall that I kept building for myself or ceiling, you know? Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. So then tell us a little bit then, how did that lead you into the actual type of music that you produce? You do a lot of R and B, you do mm -hmm. a lot of um, like, songs with a lot of emotion yes. um but they're also songs that are actually very empowering they're not like necessarily mm -hmm. you know um songs that are talking a lot about you know uh the dependency i guess if you will on someone else for love and that type of stuff right. but yeah so tell us a little bit you know what led you into like that genre or yeah. what inspires these words um, well, it's so interesting because I feel like it's only when I started taking myself seriously after like my second or third song that I started actually thinking back of, as to like, why, like, what is my story? Or I started being asked these questions and I was like, and honestly, for me, when I started writing music, I had just had my heart broken. I was just came back from studying abroad. I was 
not sure what I wanted to do. I was in the middle of my studies. I was like, I have no idea what it is that I want to do. But then I feel like all of the painful experiences that I was having, I could only really uh, flip them and see them as lessons um, by c turning them into something else or actually yeah. purely stating the lessons that I learned. Right. And I was yeah. like, okay, if I'm scared to share them, if I, if I'm writing purely from that place, from, from a place of truth, from a place of hindsight, I write all of my music in hindsight of like, what did I mm. learn? What did I wish that I said that night? And I'm, and the more that I wrote music, the closer and closer that time gap became to when I just started saying exactly what it is that I mean, you yeah. know, yeah. and, and I feel like my my music is maturing alongside that but it very very much came from absolute place of truth of like who do i like who do i feel myself to be mm. like honestly when i'm by myself mm -hmm. and, and how how do i how do i get as close to that person as possible and so and it's by writing in her voice and it's so interesting because i used to tell my boyfriend, like, after I'd get off stage, I'd have this, like, euphoric feeling of, like, catharsis because this is, like, actual mm -hmm. things happen to me. And then, but then I'd be like, oh, you know, just fake it till you make it. And then he was like, you know, th that's your, those are your words. Like, me, and then I was like, wow, what if, like, the person that I am in my music is actually closer to the person that I am than I am in real life without right. all these social stand, without this these formalities, without trying to be this or that, you know. Yeah, yeah, like the, so, yeah. trying to meet these expectations that right, you. like yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That that reminds me a lot about you know because you're you're talking about writing and how you got into the kind mm -hmm. of music that you write and your experiences, but you know it, it it's really the same process in any form of writing like you know mm -hmm. people say you should journal or um you know sometimes when you're really angry and and you just need an outlet like yeah. you might not be a talented singer but you can write a letter that you're never going to send right it just it's just a, it's really about getting it out of you yeah. and when when you said that you know you like felt coming off the stage like you would just you know became yourself mm. that that's like so powerful it's see because to me it feels like yeah it's like you know, you're just, you're getting this thing, whatever that is out of you and you're no longer bound mm -hmm. by, you know, whatever, um, yeah. you know, expectations or, yeah. or like boundaries that you have yeah. in your real life. And yeah, yeah I, I think like you put it perfectly, you know, you kind of do start to feel like you're getting closer to who you actually are. Yeah. And that you know? self-expression can come in any medium. Yeah. Like it does not even have to be art. Like, it, it, and like really what you were saying, just pen to pa paper is one of the things I feel like we've lost in this digital age so much, but I will journal like a maniac and only, <laughs> and maybe I'm like one of those people only journals when like bad things are happening to right. me. But, and it's, it's just, it's, it's that, it's that accessible to you. Like and whenever okay. you need it, it's there yeah. for you. And yeah. just and know that. Right. And that's also okay. Like if there's, if you just have a book and it's just full of like terrible things that have happened to you or bad emotions, that's okay. Yeah. You because know? guess what? Like, One day on a good day, you're going to look back at all of those and be like, all of those bad days had to happen in order for me to get this good day. Mm, and I'm thankful yes. for it. Yes, you know. yes, yes. Yeah, totally. Um, okay. Well, going on, moving on. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to talk a little bit about the pandemic and mm. yeah i know let me take a sip um, for that one <laughs> i mean we're still going through it um it's like it's you know what uh, we're not going to get into this you know conversation about yeah. we're just not going to get into conversation about that but what we what we, what we do want to say is we're obviously still going through it and yeah. there's very challenging times still and and a lot of uncertainty Mm -hmm. um, and we are all still having to deal with various things related to this global crisis in some form or fashion, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when we were all going through it collectively together, you started writing some songs and you got a couple songs out. Um, tell us a little bit about not just the song itself and what inspired them, but again, like, you know, because um, what, I, what I really want to do is I want the audience to be able to 
uh, you know, come leave away with some ideas and some yeah. like, okay, she yeah. did this and she ended up with this. Maybe I can apply like that same right. approach to whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I feel like I, it was a, it was a shift in perspective mm. it, uh, for me to realize why it is that I'm doing this because for the first time, right before the pandemic ended, I was just starting to perform around the city. Like I was just getting my footing. I was just figuring out who that was. And then boom, the pandemic happened. And then it's like all of the things that were accessible to me were no longer accessible to me, which was honestly a blessing in its own right, because it showed me how much of it came from such a true place. It wasn't right. just me being in the right place at the right time. Like it, it like I had something to say and I, and I had to fight for that in the pandemic because it's like, then it has it you have to need to say something right right but in the pandemic i i kind of was just like why the question was why am i actually doing this what and I, you were just like alone with your own thoughts which is pretty much what i do right <laughs> right um but it's so interesting because the song that i released rewind um i released it during the pandemic but i wrote it for my boyfriend's birthday actually it's a song about like you know we're both actors like we both have to uh go away from home a lot i you know i'm i'm somebody that that gets really nervous about that and i wanted to give him a gift that felt like a gift i wanted it to feel like a hug and those words resonated in such a different way two months later and i hadn't i wasn't even planning on recording it or anything but then all of those words had a completely different meaning by the time it got to March, April. And I was like, I was like, I, I, I couldn't connect with people anymore. Mm. And I felt like that was the part of myself that I was so sure of when I got on stage. And that's why, like, before I even had that many songs out, like, I started performing when I only had one song out. Like, mm -hmm. I was just doing covers. Like, I don't yeah. know. Like, before, before, <laughs> but being able to feel that energy or that, that um that a community like honestly that like i'm not the only person going to i'm not i'm not crazy like i'm not yeah. you know so i feel like in that pandemic i i wanted to i wanted to give something i wanted to i wanted to know that people were feeling something and it was that desperation that made me almost be like let me just put it out like all strings attached outside of oh are you sure did you like make sure to send it to enough people well, like all of the all of the games around releasing music kind of disappeared because they didn't exist anymore it, right. people there were a completely different set of rules not that right. i to begin with but i was like i had to distill it down to the most real thing is like i want i want other people to feel something i want i want to give some people something you know it's, yeah. it's a, industry at the end of the day making music is it and and that's how i see it and so um in that desperate need to do that i was like gosh okay what is the one way that i can reach as many people because i know that if 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 i could be in front of them i would be able to connect with them mm -hmm. and, TikTok, and i literally i can't even emphasize enough how much i brought it down to the core i was like just dancing to my own music and i was like yeah. if you like this check it out and then people were just on it. And then that helped bring more people into our little community, our little family. And, and seeing that, like, I just, yeah, it, it was just something of like out of desperation to like feel other people. And then I realized the responsibility that I held and that made me want to keep going. And I was like, there are people outside of there. And, it, and it's so hard when you're just isolated and in this little house to remember that like mm -hmm. everybody is a full formed human being with full formed experiences, pain, like, you know, trauma, baggage, all of these things that they're working through. And so if you can put a smile on their face by doing something that you love, why not? Yeah. Right? Amazing. Yeah, of course. That, that reminds me of, you know, because sometimes even, even outside of the pandemic, you mm -hmm. know, when we're experiencing isolation or we feel, you know, that we can't see someone or, or even if we can see them, but we still feel isolated or lonely yeah. in some way that music can connect us in that way. You know, it kind of reminds me of like, when you put together a playlist for someone and, yes. you know, you send it to them yes. and, and it's that way for you to not only express maybe what you're thinking and your yes. thoughts and your emotions, but then also sometimes a way just to 
to brighten up their day, you know, and, and to like remind them of all these beautiful things that have been expressed through all these people who've made, you know, created this amazing art, you know, including you. So um, like what you just said about just sending somebody a song, like the, the amount of day that would make my entire day, like during COVID. Like yeah. if someone was like, yo, I heard this song, like it made me think of you. Yeah. Like even being able to do that and being able to know that you have all of these songs, these playlists, these moods that I could create, these these things that could help me through whatever discovery I was going through, even right. outside of me making music, but purely just listening to music or synthesizing music and think, mm -hmm. like allowing it to make me think, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then going into that a little bit deeper, you know, have you found that not just in writing music and creating it and performing it, but then also listening, you know, you said that for a while you were doing a bunch of covers, you know, how has that moved you along in terms of being able to express yourself, um, feel, you know, maybe more vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, potentially even like say things that you wouldn't say in, in spoken word, right? 100%. Like maybe, maybe 100%. you're going to like confess something that you've wanted to say to someone, maybe your love or yeah. whatever, or, or your fear or your trauma or whatever. But the only way that you can find to say it is through a song. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that's really how I found music is by doing that is like, I was, um, I'm sure a lot of people will relate to this. I was like a chronic, like acoustic instrumental on YouTube girl like, <laughs> growing up. Like I, I spent like many a days, many of viewers watching that. Yeah. And, those karaoke tracks. But, but just in general, I think like one of my all time inspirations is Lauren Hill. And I have, I have the vinyl right here. Like I literally nice. just stare at it. Oh my gosh, time. nice. Um, but Talk about inspiration. I know, but like it, it was it was the truth in in her words that made me want to dig even deeper than the music that I was creating. But like, but purely just like being able, and this is also as an actor, like being able to live through somebody else's experiences allows you to sympathize with yeah, yourself yeah. Right, right much better because yeah, yeah. i feel like that's one of the hardest things to do is like without guilt sympathize with yourself of like yes maybe i did go through this and get that lesson and not overindulge but purely like be like yes i went i did go through that and acknowledging that and moving on from it so i feel like being able to do that there are so many words there's so many melodies there's so many feelings out there in the music that if you connect with them at all i i dare you to just pull up a karaoke track and and um try and do that and feel through that and i think that's another reason why like me being able to study musical theater has allowed me to find that connection and they always say like there's always a change there you always feel a change in the music mm -hmm. like whenever there's a musical song like these are my teachers at, at nyu they say they're like if if the words aren't strong enough to say, they have to sing it. Mm. And I feel that's so true, even yeah. just as an industry, as music in general. And so I, by singing all of these songs that made me want to perform them, not made me want to sing it, made me want to perform them. Right, that which felt is, there's a difference, yeah. yeah. And then the more that I started, you know, associating myself with the people that I looked up to instead of putting them on a pedestal that I could never reach, I started to realize that really we're not that far off. All yeah. Of them. Yeah. And it was also like, you know, you were coming back home. You were always coming back to yourself. Exactly. And if I ever didn't have anything to say, I could pull up one of those songs. I could pull up one of my favorite songs, take those words out and say those words myself. And then. Yeah. yeah. There's been so many times where I've, I've found just lyrics, you know, yeah. and I don't sing the lyrics. I literally just copy and paste them and I'll yeah. put them somewhere, yes. you know, like yes. I'll just put the, I'll put the little, the chorus or the lyric or yes. whatever, like on my phone. And, and it's just like, it's just like poetry, you know what yes. I mean? Like, it's just like finding either poetry yeah. or, or a quote or something, you know, like. And also I'm sure we can all relate to that song that just makes you want to find the closest mirror and just like lip sync that 
right you know to yourself yeah. like that is that is my goal as a musician is being able to make music like that but i know that i'm one of those people and i know that's something that's accessible to everyone because you don't even got the words don't even got to come out of your mouth you just right. gotta mouth them. <laughs> but like being able to like feel that in feel music in like your whole body and in, in all of your entirety and just allowing yourself to indulge yeah. has been the greatest like door opener for me like allowing myself to indulge in whatever i'm doing whether i'm good at it or not <laughs> yeah yeah one thousand percent um so we we are actually close to to wrapping up but this is like the perfect segue because that is what i wanted to ask you to close is like in your opinion or in your experience mm -hmm. you know what have been like maybe the top three ways or the top couple of ways in which you have incorporated music as a way to um, increase your your personal wellness, mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I I guess I want to frame this in a way where I I really want to convey to the audience that um, you know this isn't always just about coping. It's not mm -hmm. just about hard times. It's no. also about like celebrate. You know, celebrate. That's right. Yes. Celebration yes. and and just like I'm happy today, yes. so I'm gonna be even more happy. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like yes. it doesn't have to be about just pain and trauma and coping. Although yes, we definitely experience a lot of that. We also have to remember that there's so much joy that we can just step into. So that being said, um, what are like the couple of ways that you can think of to incorporate music in general? It can be lyrics, it can yes. be, it can be um, rhythm, whatever yes. part of music you wanna think of. Like what are some of the ways that you do it that maybe our, our, our audience can start to think about it as well? Well, firstly, the whole idea of playlisting is one of the best ways into it. Um, and this definitely is, this next one is definitely easier for me because I live in New York and, you know, everybody thinks they're main character in New York, but <laughs> scoring your own movie almost with those playlists is oh, something that I do yes. very often. Oh my gosh, I love that. You yes. know, you know that yeah. like we were all 15 <laughs> years old in the back of the car while it's raining, like with the yep. iPod in. But like, I, I mean, like genuinely, like what you were talking about, like if you're feeling happy, go pull up your happy playlist, those songs that make you feel some type of way. Mm -hmm. When you're opening up your Discover Weekly and you hear a song that makes you feel some type of way, boom, put it in a playlist and start building that for yourself yeah. because, and they're all gonna be music that you're familiar with. And it's something that is intimately connected to your taste in music. So even if you feel like, oh, I don't know, I don't have a taste in music, you absolutely do because your taste is something that makes you feel something ultimately. Yep. Yeah, and so I, I, I dare you to do that and and start scoring the things that you start to enjoy. Like like now I, I have a speaker in almost every room in, in my house where like at any point where I'm by myself and I need to think through something or I'm doing something Monday and I put music on and I'm like and I and I feel the music so much more than whatever I'm doing. So yeah. I would say that I would say like I feel like everybody has these random things like random thoughts in your head, these lessons. Like I, I just think about like how much time that I have when I'm on the subway and I'm just like mm. and I think of a sentence or I say a sentence that like I'm like, damn, that's really good. That should be a lyric. Like not even from a point of a mus musician, like all of my non-musician friends have had this moment too. Yeah, yeah. Just write it down. Write it down in your notes. Because you're going to realize like how the human nature is like connected to poetry. Like yeah. we, the, even the fact that like we have this whole rhythm of speaking, every language has its own like rhythm and, and different ways to say things. That's poetry. So just mm -hmm. write those down and then, and, and just, and yeah, I guess free write. Free write, it has been one of the best things that I've ever done. If you haven't read, if you're trying to get, like be more connected to your own like creative side, I'd urge you mm -hmm. to read, um, I urge you to read um, The Artist's Way. And okay. it teaches you a lot of things about like getting into it, whether or not you consider yourself an artist. And if you just wanna explore it, it has things like going on an artist day, taking yourself out to by yourself, you have to go by yourself, going to a museum, consuming some sort of art outside of yourself that you want to consume, mm. and then just writing down. And they have like these things about the morning pages where first thing you do when you wake up, just a free write, one page. Yeah. Like, it could be gibberish. Whatever like, comes to mind, yeah. Yeah, but whatever it is, just realize that 
those mediums exist for you to have that release, whether or not you want to monetize on it or not. Yeah. You know? And who knows? But, maybe, maybe, maybe there's knows? some gold in there that you'll if be able anything, to monetize get later. Bag. I'll be the <laughs> right? first to say it. <laughs> and this is me speaking from my little Pisces mug. So yeah, there you go. You know. I'm a water There slide. you go. Through and through. I was like, I love it. I love it. Well, thank you, Beth. On that note, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. That was a perfect, oh. perfect ending. And yeah, we just want to thank you so much for spending your time with us. You know, like thank everything you. that everything that people do with us is volunteer. They're giving up yeah. their time, you know, and it's because we're all just committed to each other and yes. like trying to leave this place a little better than we found it. So follow Beth yes. on IG, Bethlehem Million. Honestly, she's amazing. Download her songs. Thank she's on you. Spotify. She's on Apple Music. She's on all of the major platforms. And I think you have a movie coming up. Is that right? I do. I've been That's hard amazing. at work this year. Using that is essay. awesome. Hey, yeah. all right. Well, you know, it. like, you know, we're friends now. So, we're you friends. Know, Listen, we're like... all of us are friends. <laughs> <laughs> we're all yeah. Thank you so much for having me and thank of you for course. everything that you guys do for your of community course. and and everything. It's we're, it's we're, an honor we're... to be here. Thank thank you Have Beth. Thank you. Thanks for accepting. All right. Thanks everyone. We will see you all again soon. Yes. Remember to join us for Wellness Wednesdays and take care of yourself, be good to yourself and listen to Beth's music. Yeah. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye everyone. Thank you.